So let's let's maybe go th quickly through a couple of things because I did not prepare any slide deck or anything because I wanted to keep it a little bit open today. Um, for those who are not yet participating, um, I'm going through the um, and of course summit and hackathon stuff that we discussed during during the hackathon mostly actually, but then also had some ongoing discussions during the next flow summit in Barcelona a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we initiated a couple of things there that I would like to guide you through. This is going to be recorded. So if you speak up at some point, please be aware that this is recorded and will be shared by NFCore so that you're aware of that. Um, so if please don't disclose anything that you're not willing to actually share with people outside as well. Um, just a disclaimer, maybe upfront. We can certainly edit out stuff, but I would like to avoid that ideally. Okay, I'll share my screen quickly and then um, I hope you can actually see it. Um, which one I want to share. So actually, uh, maybe I'll put you on the other screen if this is possible. I don't know about Zoom actually. I'm really bad with Zoom. Okay, yeah, that works. So um, what we started with at the NF Core Hackathon and then also at the Next Flow Summit is actually coming up with a couple of topics that we would like to bring up and that we would like to cover with this NF Core initiative. Some of the stuff that we discussed, I also had in my Next Flow Summit presentation. I'm not going to go for the full presentation there, but um, since this is anyways recorded and available online, and, and some of the points were also mentioned during Anik's uh, talk uh, a day before, actually when she talked about the RNA fusion pipeline where, where people have already taken some of these steps forward. Um, so a couple of the points that we would that we basically discussed uh, is that uh, we would like to keep kind of a pragmatic way forward for the NF core regulatory special interest group rather than going into each of the details that are potential topics we would we could cover in the future, but rather also taking some feedback into account that people were sharing from their respective institutions, providers, and also companies, that we would like to really move this forward in a way that it's as generic as possible, while this allows for people to really cover their specific use cases. So a couple of things in NF Core, for example, could really be improved so that we can help people actually doing, let's say, for example, what Anik did with, with the team on RNA Fusion, uh, trying to validate the RNA Fusion pipeline for their own purposes, uh, if other people are wanting to do something else like this for other pipelines within NF Core, there are certain things that we can certainly provide from an NF Core community perspective. And that's exactly kind of the angle we're trying to do now and what we kind of agreed now during the hackathon. So we will not be able to like validate any NF Core pipeline in a way that everybody can just take it off the shelf and say, this is a validated pipeline. What we can do is, however, take an influence, take a step at the guidelines that are already there take an influence in terms of what needs to be aware of, uh, create some awareness on the community, for example, that we need to do certain things in a special way so that uh, it's easier to validate a pipeline um, in NF Core um, for different purposes. And a couple of points that we brought up more frequently were actually like highlighting a couple of points that we already do. So unit and sub workflow tests should be present. We need to have documentation and user guides that cover at least the use cases that you would like to validate within a pipeline, because pipeline per se also means that you can have multiple types of uh, execution runs, like different tooling, different paths through your pipeline. For example, you could use different tools within your pipeline. Things like that should be documented and also accessible. And then also um, we have a couple of things that we already brought up that are actually changes and improvements on an NF core community level that we think we should really cover. So there are a couple of gaps, for example, version guidelines um, with a tag so that you can go to the docu documentation on the NF Core web page uh, and see a certain version of a guideline, for example, because at the moment NF Core just updates the guidelines. They're still accessible on the, on the Git repository that is used to create the documentation and to create the website. So you can technically go back and show this is what we used, but you would like to have like a tag or something like that, that you just say um, NF Core Pipeline X and how we implemented this and how we did the validation for this specific pipeline is based on the guidelines that NF Core already imposes on people version 1.0, something like that. And that's currently not possible via the NF Core website. So we flagged an issue there. Also, I brought up a little bit of the tooling discussions that are existing in NF Core. So, for example, for people who are not aware, 
the NF Core website also had a stats page that basically collected a lot of information who contributed to a pipeline, who did how many Git commits, who, how many people are actually pulling a pipeline per month, things like that, because we got some feedback from our um, teams internally that it would be helping in terms of gaining trust in a certain pipeline development to know how much activity is actually going around with pipelines. Maxime, yes. Uh, yes, I know that in Sarek we just like recently uh, put back like the squash and merge commit when we do PR. So the mm -hmm. number of commits might be reduced there, but it might be a bit skewed like compare one pipeline to another pipeline. Yes. Yeah, I think. Is it, is it something that we should be continue that we should be doing uh, forward for all of pipeline, or should we like should all of the pipeline be at the same level? I don't think it matters too much because no feedback from our end at least was received that it really matters that much. The, the more concrete things is people would like to see how many people are actually actively working on a pipeline. So if it's just a single developer, for example, then they would not be too much. Yeah, then they would say it's not that trustworthy. Then you have like 300 people developing actively on a pipeline because there is many more eyes actually looking and checking a code base. It doesn't mean like a pipeline is completely non-trustworthy, but if you have multiple people taking care of maintenance, if you have multiple people from different institutions across the globe actually contributing to it, they have more trust into this type of pipeline development than having an individual single user working on it. There is a couple of limitations to that statement, but um, I think it's it's good to um, have that raised as well. And if we can, for example, provide statistics, information that you can then download for a pipeline from the NFCore community very easily that creates, let's say, a report that includes all of this information, then you can hand that over to, um, to your auditor, to your team that do, does the quality assessment of such things, and they will at, at least have a, a have a feasible option to actually check, okay, do we trust this development effort there or do we not trust it and would like to see a little bit more done on a validation perspective, for example, because you can also gain trust by just checking code, doing reviews, doing uh, certain additional tests and benchmarks that you anyways would like to do, but the level on how extensive these are, that's probably something that you can limit if you do proper um, if you do proper documentation like this on an NFCore level already. So a couple of points that were also brought up. Um, I think this final validation, that's actually a good example that also, and I would also recommend people to watch the talk that Anik gave on the RNA Fusion one, this kind of final validation step that you would like to do when you want to use a pipeline internally in your institution, in your company, in your whatever environment you want to run analysis pipelines in, really depends on a lot of other aspects that we already said this is not going to be in scope with what we want to tackle with the regulatory team here and the regulatory special interest group. Because, for example, it really matters a lot what type of sample analysis you're doing. Is it something that you really are doing only very infrequently? What types of kits are you using for sample prep, for example? What types of data do you expect? There's a lot of moving parameters there that we can't control from within the NF Core community. In the end, something that you have to do on your own, within your own institution to some extent. You, Depending on what you're doing there, you may be able to actually share that also in terms of experience with the community. Yes, that might be true, but not in all cases, this is actually a feasible option. And I think it's something that we also kind of crystallized out, also given the feedback that you gave, Anik, in your talk, and also that a lot of people during the discussions brought up, um, that this is actually something that we have to make people aware of, that... NF Core itself will only make it easier and will work on making it easier to do validations of pipelines, but will not cover the entire thing that you need to do if you really want to go for a full validation of an NF Core pipeline. So we'll help with the first steps, we'll help with the nitty details that you have, like let's say a report that mentions a lot of the details that people would like to see when you do a pipeline validation so that the entire process is easier for everybody, but nothing else than that. And I think that's also a key takeaway message that we more or less got out of the discussions at the Hackathon. And to initiate initiate this, and I'm going to skip now the slides again, um, we started, and this is actually already live, so that's the first draft of the regulatory overview uh, page with the guidelines. So you can actually look this up. It's actually an open document. It's a draft version at the moment. We will also have this versioning coming via the NF Core webpage. 
And we also uh, outlined a, a lot of these things that I already brought up here. That's also, also up for discussion. And we are really happy if anybody uh, takes a look, reads through it, skims some details and lets us know what they think about this. Uh, what would be something that, you, that you're currently missing? What do you think is something that we should still add? And then we basically uh, wrote down a lot of these points together, what could be kind of an overview. And then later on, we also wanted to have like a checklist so that people know exactly where to find which type of information that they would like to include in their validation from within NFCore. Because that's also some feedback we received from some uh, auditing people and people with a quality background. They're currently really lacking. If you don't know anything about NFCore, a lot of people come to the web page, they skim through the web page, they will not find the respective information pieces they would like to see. It's not so easy for them. And our hope is that we have the central kind of overview page, our perspective on this kind of validation, regulatory affairs topic, and then a checklist and also some information for people with this regulatory auditing quality background. This is where you find the information. And at some point, even provide maybe some tooling from within the NFCore community, for example, that upon each release of a pipeline snapshots, all of the relevant guidelines, documents, statistics, whatever else in a PDF or something like that. So that is kind of also frozen in time, maybe even attached to the pipeline release automatically via some continuous integration or something like that, and then provide it to users because that would then really make it easy so somebody would, who would like to validate the RNA Fusion 3.2 or something like that, they would just need to get that document from the release and check it and provide that to whoever is actually doing the quality assessment and build on top of it. I mean, a lot of the information could then be there already. So yeah, there's a couple of things that we listed in terms of like community metrics. That's actually some stuff that we would like to uh, tackle with this document. We have some general requirements versioning requirements, what we what we would think as, as being something crucial to address. A lot of this is already covered by NFCore. So this is not something that is super difficult to do, but I think a lot of this is already there. Some code and software development process quality, change management, what we intend as necessary. There's a couple of gaps. So for example, NFCore at the moment doesn't do decision management. So whenever a team in a, in a pipeline does a decision, let's say we decide, okay, we will kick out these two tools because we think they're not, not like the latest standard in, let's say, RNA Fusion, for example, did that at some point. I'm going back to RNA Fusion all the time. Yes, sorry about that. But um, they kicked out a couple of tools because there were some drawbacks with them and um, this was actually uh, deprecated. So that decision is currently not locked anywhere. I mean, you can find it, in the in the change log, I think, but you will not have like a central other location where this is actually recorded in some to some extent. That's something that we need to think about. Like maybe either we make it kind of a standard approach that we do this via the change log, but flag them differently, something like that. Things like that are currently not. There is no recommendation on how to do this in NFCore, and that's just one example. Yes. Then security stuff is currently not fully extensive. Uh, there's a couple of things that we did not fully elaborate on, but that's something that we intend to also write up. And then there is some testing. We actually went quite deep into testing. So functional testing, integrative testing. And then we also had a couple of extra points listed here that we would like to also cover. This is currently not um, like fully fleshed out. So yeah. What do people think about this? Do you think this is kind of a feasible approach? Do you think this adds something? At the hackathon, people thought this really adds something because it makes it easier for people. Um, but I'm really curious to hear also other perspectives because most of you were not there at the hackathon, at least. Christoph, you have, have your hand raised. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I haven't been to the hackathon. Um... And um, I have a background from, I, I'm coming from like the IVDR, so in, in vitro diagnostics and uh, medical software, so medical device software, basically. And um, so my main question is um, kind of what's, so you're, you're always talking about, about the validation of the pipelines. And um, so I, I think it, 
totally depends what what is your perspective on the top uh, on on the topic regulatory affairs um because for the for the diagnostics and uh, so the, the the kind of the regulation that we have in the uh, European Union um we have to stick to like the some uh, uh, international norms and the thing there is um if i would take like an nf core pipeline and include it in my product um i would i would need any way to validate the outcome that's generated by my product which is like an of core plus done thing um so in my perspective this would be something like a like a off the shelf software or software of unknown provenance that this would fall into the kind of category that i have to track um and what I see what would be helpful in this scenario would be something like um, uh, checking for, let's say, security uh, vulner vulnerabilities. So like having a, a software book of materials, so to see which which tools are included in the whole pipeline, which might then be um, named on whatever um, website that they have some security issues. Or that there are like, as you said, like this, this changing of. So I'm, 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 like, but that's that's something that you also would need to um, to track. Like that, um, if you're using or updating the, the pipeline included in your in your product, then you would also need to check is there kind of a major change by the tools that are used, and if this would lead to like uh, different outcomes if you provide it with, with certain inputs. Um, so it kind of goes back to the, to the point um, for for which kind of regulatory um, constraints are we doing this? And if you're doing it for like pharma and IVDR and in the clinics, then I think it would be good to have a look more like in the regulatory um, documents to see um, what kind of um, constraints they are putting on you if you're using it in this or this context. And um, I think all of this is really good, really helpful, um, but kind of either pointing this out here or just say, okay, we, we don't care. You as the person who uses this thing in a, in a um, product environment, you need to mm -hmm. make sure that you, that you stick to the rules and not NF4. So it's kind of a focus thing. So that's that's more or less a question I have regarding what's what's the goal of this. That's actually a very good question, and I think um, we can even try to answer that from within what we've discussed also during the hackathon, because it was already coming up quite often because we had different people with a different background, different institutions behind them, different needs in terms of what they need to fulfill with regulatory background. So some of us are from a pharma com uh, company background. Some of us are more from an academic background with which does some clinical testing. Some of us have a, a little bit of a different angle as well. So it really becomes very difficult to actually make a one shoe fits all solution for everybody within NF Core. But we can identify things that are either overlapping and there are certainly big overlaps to some extent, independent of what we're trying to do. A lot of things like, let's just say, take let's take testing, functional testing. That's probably something independent, more or less independent of what you're intending to do with a certain NF core pipeline. A lot of the authorities will require you to actually provide some kind of documentation on are there tests, how are they then, what's covered, what are they actually testing and trying to achieve. They may not be, and that's actually, I think, the kind of distinction that we need to do at some point. We can provide a lot of the functional background. We can provide a lot of what, what comes with the framework within the NF core pipelines within the community. And then the checklist, for example, one idea we had, and I think I outlined this here as well, the idea was that we flag this checklist buttons basically with labels. So if you want to make, if you want to validate a pipeline under IVDR regulations, 
then this is something you have to take into account when you do this. If you want to do this for an, a certain ISO level, then you also need to take care of this certain steps in, in your checklist. Maybe I'm bad at explaining it, but the idea was basically to list as many of the potential points that you need to address as possible within NFCore. Try to tackle, try to provide as many of the background as possible in a generic way so that people can just take it off the shelf. So for example, what you just mentioned with which type of tools are actually inside a pipeline? How are they actually updated? When are they updated? Which version is coming with a certain pipeline release? This type of information all exists already within NF4. We have that already locked and coming with the pipeline in certain um, YAML files, for example, and other information. But it's not currently written out in a way that somebody can just take the pipeline, have this document where you basically have a list of tools and software that is currently inside this pipeline. It's not. It's coming when you run the pipeline, usually in a multi-QC report or something like that, but it's not coming upfront, basically. Things like that could be done a little bit better, could be done a little bit easier in terms of that you then don't have to look at 10 different locations and just have this one PDF, basically, that tells you about a lot of these things. And then the last missing bit for, for us, for example, would be we need to run a pipeline, a certain release of a pipeline then on our own infrastructure where we really do run the pipeline with real test data that we uh, that we think is um, representative of what we are intending to test uh, run with the pipeline in a in a in a in a proper setting then in a production setting to verify and maybe also have some in license data where we run the pipeline on this combined together with the information that comes from the community then would make it hopefully easier and quicker to actually do to to actually do such a validation it may not be very easy. I mean, I'm I'm not saying this is a is going to be a solution that fits everybody and everything, but we have to come up with a pragmatic way, move these things forward, maybe also do a proof of concept. That is also something that we intended to do. That we go through the RNA seek pipeline, for example, once and check what's there and what what can be documented and written up in such a document and shared with the community. And then maybe also propose changes on the NF core tooling. So that what Maxim just mentioned that we have, for example, NF Core tools functionality or some functionality on the web page that provides users and, and also authorities at some point with this information. And yeah, you just raise your hand again. Sorry. I'm just looking this yeah. way because I have you on my other screen. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, just one, one thing um, I would advise against putting these labels on the IBDR and the ISO thing, because usually it, it, it could look like you are a certified, like your company and, and you have been uh, audited and certified to produce or that, that, that the product, like in this case, your NFCore pipeline sticks to the rules of the IBDR. And I doubt that this is what uh, NFCore is going to. So this is, this is not what's going to happen. There's so much more to it than than this. Um, so, I mean, you could say like something like kind kind of similar to or whatever. So kind of make it so weaken that thing that you say that people say understand it's not a, it's not an IVD that that we are putting out here, um, and we are not. Totally, so 100% sticking to the rules of a uh, ISO X, X, Y, or Z. Because then I think you would, you could come really into troubles with, with authorities if somebody uh, blames that you said this thing is uh, an IVD. That's a good point. I think what we need to stress, and maybe that's something that we need to make sure that people understand this, that the idea with this is just to provide people with some guidance. This is something you need to fulfill in order to become and fulfill a certain requirement. Not more than that, that we don't really, I mean, we will definitely not issue any of this. The idea is just that we make it easy for people to actually work under this kind of, yeah, but I, I get your point. I think yes. that's something we just have to make sure that it's clear in the, in the documentation as well. Let's do that. Yeah, good point. Maxime and Anik also had her. Space. Yeah, uh, sorry, it's not really related to what we were talking. I was just uh, thinking about the when we release a pipeline, 
Uh, usually, we have release not. Uh, I've noticed, for example, I was just checking the demultiplex pipeline. Uh, the last one that was released, it was you, Alex. And I feel that what you did was copy paste what was in the change log. And if I yes. compare to what uh, to the previous release that was done by uh, by Gregor, Anna, Gregor, uh, uh, Gregor, yes, the one point five point two. I think he used the auto format for uh, yes. GitHub, which I do think is slightly better because I can see who uh, participate on which PR, which is kind of more helpful, I think. So mm -hmm. I think we can maybe like have a bridge in between or and like auto generate the, the release not uh, using uh, using yeah. whatever we have like uh, on GitHub. Uh, if we could do that for all of the pipelines, that would be nice because then we could have like a simplified way of checking who contributing to which pipeline and uh, to which release. And I think it would be nice to generalize to really generalize that for all of the of the release for all of NF Core. I think that would be a win. Uh, not just for the pipeline we're interested in, but all of them. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Sorry, a bit, a bit sidetracked, but I, I think it's an interesting point as well. And yeah, I don't think it was, it was on the list. No, I don't think so either. No, mm -hmm. not yet. We don't have any guidelines. And, and that's exactly these type of gaps that I think are some, some things that we need to either list there or then also add to the other guidelines that we have at the moment. There's a couple of guidelines within NF Core. People know about them, like like these pipeline guidelines, for example, here, and how to do certain things within NF Core. And we should make sure that all of these are actually up to date and also cover some of the aspects that we deem necessary, because that's also some key points that we would like to contribute to. So one thing that uh, we also discussed during the uh, during the um, hackathon actually um, was that we would like to really kick this also off in terms of that we really run a couple of public test data sets and provide like like a full run through of a NF core pipeline where we identify what's kind of missing at the moment because at the moment it's more like from a theoretical point of view that people know okay these are potential things that we need to cover but what, what happens if you really go through this entire kind of process with the, with a regular and well-established NF core pipeline? So that's something that we would like to also go through. And at some point we discussed doing this together with the community with the RNA seq pipeline, for example, that's more or less one of the most established ones, I would say, uh, has relatively high code standards, relatively high um, documentation standards already. So we think it could be a good candidate for doing this because it's also one of the most most used ones, if not the most used one, um, so that we go through that entire process, also check on all of these aspects, identify if you're missing certain points, and then also bring that back to this overview and the checklist, basically. And um, yeah, that's something that we would like to do in the next couple of uh, months, probably, because I think it's not going to be something that because I'm also just doing this as a side project, while I still have a lot of other things also at work that I can't completely abandon for the time being. What do people think? Are there others who are, for example, saying, I would like to share my own experience with doing that? For example, Anik, I mean, you at some point also discussed, maybe you can share some of the insights that you have already. We also have um, other people who are, I think, doing this for other pipelines maybe, or have done it already. So they can also maybe share, maybe can also do some outreach within the community if anybody ever did anything in that direction. So what would be their perspective on that? And maybe also some people could like review um, like a shared document where we actually go through that entire process where we flag also individual points that are currently missing, for example, and open tickets and issues with the community. What do people think about that? I mean, we didn't get to that at the hackathon. I mean, that was just like two and a half days actually. And some of us did not just work on this um, uh, special interest group topics, but other, also other things. But yeah, what would people think about this? Any comments? Anik, yes. So um, I could try to put in as much as possible of what we is mentioned here in in uh, Ionic Fusion and see what is. So it was very con conceptual 
um, what I was talking about, but but actually making it now very concrete and and saying, okay, this is what I can say about how we, um, yeah, what is exactly what that I can share and what is uh, things that I can't, um, um, and do a proof of concept sort of. Mm -hmm. That would be my my suggestion, at, at least on on my side. Yeah, but that sounds very good actually. Because I think, like, yeah, I mean, Christopher Moore, who's also on the call, and I, we may actually be able to work on the RNA fusion, uh, RNA seq pipeline, and do that kind of proof of concept together. Also checking against what we have in terms of uh, points that were brought up by you know, internal affairs and that. So, and maybe we can also share that because this is anyways open source work. So um, that's something we can also discuss then more openly so that we can also bring it up here together in the overview and the checklist and contribute to that. I also would like to really, I mean, if people, for example, have certain uh, comments like the one from Christoph with the IVDR slash ISO labels that we should make this more explicit that we don't intend to label things that way, but that we would like to give people some guidance. This is probably something that you need to fulfill if you want to go in that direction. Um, then that's also very welcome if people are actually open pull requests and contributing to the existing documents, if they can, and uh, also want to share that. So if you feel like you want to do that, then please also just um, speak up and over, just actively contribute to the documents. I mean, this was a rough start. We had to come up with something and um, a lot of things are actually still dangling, but I think we can move this forward. Um. May I? Yes, um, sure. Uh, because, um, like from the uh, the first meeting of the regulatory uh, special interest group, I think there was like a Google Doc or something. Mm -hmm. and I read through this, um, and um, so I, I don't know. Is is all of that information already uh, entered into the, uh, so? Um, is it all not transferred? necessarily some of okay. the aspects okay. have been transferred we the problem also is a little bit i mean please interrupt me if you have a different impression uh, the problem is also you have to translate a lot of this regulatory topics into how this applies and can be potentially tackled within the nf core community and pipelines per se so that's sometimes at least for me that's always a bit of a struggling perspective because it's sometimes also, the vocabulary is a bit different. You need to really make sure that that you write things up in a way that you get something meaningful, a pragmatic out that people can actually use. Because otherwise, we have some regulatory documentation that may cover like a lot of these different regulatory requirements, but people within the community will not understand what they need to do with this. So that kind of back translation so that people really understand what's going on what they need to tackle, what they need to provide. If somebody wants them to, for example, validate a pipeline under certain requirements is sometimes not so easy. Maybe that's also a bit of a lack of, because a lot of people don't have a background there, including myself, but um, it's something that we need to at least make, make easier and accessible as possible, if possible at all. And if, for example, you have some experience with that, then it would be great if, for example, aspects are missing currently, because this is by far not complete, I think, uh, that you add some of the points that are missing at the moment. I I would assume that it's kind of a research project, a bit at least in a way, because um, kind of gathering all the the requirements from from all these mm -hmm. kind of different different kind of users, basically. So that I mean that would be helpful from my perspective that that you that you know what what does pharma regulation expect when they are using nf core and, and what are they using nf core for so like um mm -hmm. that that could could help in the end so i if i find time i, I would like to maybe add a bit to this um I, as i said I, I could um add something from the uh, ivd and and medical device perspective um and um maybe have a look into the other stuff, but maybe others can also join and we could kind of at least get a basic understanding of the, the requirements, the different regulations yes. put on, on this usage. 
Yes, I think that's perfect. And I don't, I, I know also that a lot of us are actually contributing to this more or less not in their spare time, but at least to some extent, like in, in some extra side project uh, time and can't focus on this entirely in, in their primary work time and work hours, I guess. Um, so if you have some time, even small aspects uh, are really helpful to be added and, and, and contributed to. I mean, we're really looking for people also with a different perspective because I also think is we are really trying to tackle this within NFCore with a more generic approach and not like just one single use case from a pharma perspective, for example, because that may not be as useful, for example, for people with a clinical health um, hospital background where this might be a little bit of a different thing to tackle. And I hope really that we have multiple people in who can, for example, run such a small proof of concept, go through what is already there. If they identify gaps in the current stuff that we have on the web page that we have in the community, and we try to fill these uh, with content so that we get better over time. Because I think if we, and that's also something, I mean, this main Google Docs, I mean, I don't know, when did you have a look at it last time? I mean, I had a look like uh, last, like a week ago or something like that. It's huge. And if people really go through this document from a, from the first to the last page, I mean, I don't know how many pages in the end that was in the end. It's so much information. And I think a lot of people will really struggle to actually translate that to what are actually things that I would need to do in my specific use case. And if we have multiple people doing like small contributions back with a proof of concept within their own setting, then we can really extract the information that is key and make that more prominent. And I think that's really like how we should do it. It helps people then hopefully at least. And even for our perspective, so that's completely our pharma perspective. If it makes that entire process easier and faster, then that's a good thing. Because it will help us um, to also pick up NF4 pipelines more frequently in the end. Because it makes the entire thing more feasible. You don't have to overinvest for some of the aspects a lot of people all the time. And also updates. I mean, updates are happening and you're kind of bound to update to some extent in certain use cases. And if this is always a very cumbersome process, then uh, it will probably become infeasible at some point to update. And uh, yeah, that kind of is a bit of a bad situation, specifically in a scientific um, field. But yeah. yeah, but sounds very good. And I think that matches quite what we discussed. A couple of people also point putting stuff in the chat. I don't know. Yeah, I think Arthur, your point is very much uh, there. I also feel you very much there. Uh, so Arthur made a comment. I mean, if people don't read it, a big issue in the, in the moment is that comments and issues need to be clearer, single case only and better linked. Yeah, very good point. There's a lot of these things. And there's also a bit of a debate from an NFCore perspective. I also had some people from NFCore pushing back a little because one key point of NFCore at the moment is also that people are very, it's a very welcoming and easy perspective. People can just chime in. They can just start wording, uh, working on a pipeline, contributing to it. There are certain people maintaining things, but in the end, everybody can actually contribute. And that is from a community perspective, the ideal setting also means that new newcomers can actually join in very quickly. But from a regulatory perspective, you have to make sure that a couple of things are done to ensure that nothing gets, for example, um, yeah, I mean, we've seen that in, in some open source projects where people just contributed something that was in the end malicious code, for example. So which was hard to tackle and hard to spot. And I mean, with a, with a pipeline, it's not as trivial as also given that a lot of people are actually looking over things all the time. So we catch things hopefully very quickly. But I think that's a good point. And it's easier if you have smaller issues, smaller comments, so that people can really look at these atomically and not have to go through uh, 500 lines of code a conglomerate of multiple things. Oh, my God. Arthur. Sorry, reading? that was uh, <laughs> I'm, I was reading something from work. So I did I meet myself there. Oh, okay. um, no, that was not, not, not in response to you. Sorry, that was an email. <laughs> Go ahead. My um, team also has something, or often. I, I, I feel like Arthur had something to say, but maybe that was just... Yeah, I also no, I can just, way, but... just, to, just to clarify on what I mean about the issues in the commits, right? So just that 
it's uh, the case that sometimes they are um you'll look at something and you'll you'll a commit or or an mr encapsulates many different things uh that are sometimes not always linked and i know at least from the pipelines that we have internally at gel for example that one of the important things is that each for our accreditation is that like you know everything is traceable to a single issue um and then obviously an mr you know from dev into master is a bit different right because that is that's like a release but um yeah trying to separate out ish um individual chunks of work into uh into individual mrs is kind of very important i think um and actually it differs between pipelines right some are better at this than others and i know that for me usually i try to do to have like a one issue one pr like approach but sometimes it's a bit difficult and you tackle like some issues that are linked together all into just one PR because it's simpler. But yes, I do try to do like this one issue, one PR. Maybe it's something that we can have in the guideline, general guideline for NFCore because I do think that's easier even for contributors that are not interested into like uh, clinical stuff. So, I mean, it's something we tend to flag, like the reviewers might flag, be like, this shouldn't be, and what are you doing? But I suspect it's in the guidelines. I don't know. Like I haven't read the guidelines recently enough to. Yeah, I, I think also this is this is one where I take the point that obviously it makes it harder for, um, you know, from that NF core perspective of wanting anyone just to be able to pick up and get started. The more barriers to doing a correct PR and stuff and picking up issues, the the hard the more. The more you create a barrier to maybe people that are unsure about where to get started so i appreciate like you, you can't be too draconian on it but um i think actually if if we put it in the guidelines and we encourage the um you know the core maintainers of the individual pipelines to take this attitude then you set that structure there it becomes more sort of just a pattern that the newcomers will just follow automatically yeah, maybe we should really raise that as some something already for the guidelines, because I think at least a recommendation would not harm. I mean, some of us are already doing this anyways, but others may not be aware. And if you have it in the guidelines already, then people that's exactly the, the type of thing we can report back. I do have a, a question or a comment. So the, the regulatory... So the document, the overview, that's sort of very much for NF core pipelines, right? Like, I would, mm. it'd be interesting, you know, maybe a different, um, a later thing, but in terms of, I make pipelines with the NF core tools, but they're not going on NF core. Like, sort of good, pra like a, a sort of good practices for that, that might help the, the regulatory process in terms of talking to QA or yes, like to the submission through the submission process. I think that ties in very well with one feedback we got during the discussion in the hackathon as well on the, I mean, on some of the gaps that we already flagged with the web page, for example, that guidelines are currently not versioned. So you have like this fixed version and technically you can go back. I mean, you go to the GitHub uh, website repository and go back in the Git commits there. And then you see like a version one basically, but that's not exactly what we would like to have. And that's something that will be tackled on the web page. There was also discussions on having the statistics and all of it uh, being collected. Um, on a pipeline uh, upon re each release via, via CI and then creating some document. However, that could be also NF Core tools tooling that does that for you, which would make it more feasible also for people outside of uh, the NF Core community to actually use that with an X4 pipeline. Any uh, that follows at least the general NF Core structure, but does not like completely redo everything. For example, we had a couple of, I mean, we have a couple of pipelines internally as well where we can use NF Core tooling as, as it comes from, from the community, basically. 
with a couple of limitations, obviously. I mean, the documents are not, documentation is not hosted on, on, an, on the NFCore webpage, other things like that. So we may not be able to fully capture everything upon a release of such a pipeline, for example, because the tooling per se has this interplay within with the web page and some statistics on GitHub versus what you have on your own, whatever you use for code hosting, things like that. There are some limitations there, but I think it's it's a bit of a debate, for example, how to how to tackle this. Would we like to host this kind of additional PDF that lists all of the information we intend to collect per pipeline release on the NFCore website? Or do we provide tooling that comes with the NFCore tools, which would make it more flexible also for people who are not using NFCore pipelines as they come from the NFCore community, but rather have their own pipelines that follow NFCore guidelines? There's a couple of kind of yeah, ways you can do it technically. Doesn't mean that we can't do it in a way that we do it with the tooling and then upload the document via CI to the to the NFCore page for NFCore pipelines. So it could also be a feasible way to allow it that way because then people not hosting with NFCore uh, are actually able to do that with their own registry or whatever they use for hosting their pipelines with some flexibility. Maybe not to like 100%, but maybe at least make it easier. Pumpke also has a comment. Yeah, I um, spent the last week at another hackathon and we were working on the NFPROF NextFlow plugin, mm -hmm. which might also be useful for everything we want to do out here. here. Because um, working on that, I was also reminded that uh, the tools, the NFCore tools developers, they want to put in this workflow run create functionality, I think this is on their list to do that. And the what the NFPROF plugin does, it basically will create, like it can create different kinds of reports or in our case, we worked on the row crate, like the provenance run crates, which is a report that is then generated per uh, workflow run, not per pipeline, but per run, and also specifies who runs the pipeline and gives you all the metadata yeah. and so on. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to update you guys about this, that we, that this is something that at least I worked on and I also kind of plan to continue that a little bit at least. Um, and also that, then the question is, I mean, last meeting, or I think when this uh, presentation was, uh, he s said something about biocompute objects, I think, mm -hmm. which these are kind of different from the um, RO crates, like the research object crates. They, I think they all have different scopes and applications. Um, I know that the biocompute object Great, I think it's called as well. Uh, can already be created with the NFPROF plugin, but the RO yes. crate is still a work in progress. I'm not sure if we're interested in the RO crate, if that's something that is interested for us as regulatory group, because if so, then I could spend uh, some more time on that. If it's not interesting at all for us, then uh, I don't know if I would prioritize it as much. Yeah, that's just an open question I asked. Yeah, I think the NFPROF plugin is actually something of very high interest for the regulatory group uh, in general. The current support, as you said, is only BCO objects. So what Jonathan Keeney spoke last week, last time we had this regulatory meeting um, about. However, that's just covering a standard that is accepted by the FDA at the moment. So um, that's a standard accepted by the FDA, whereas uh, in Europe, I think we don't have any accepted standard at the moment how to report such a pipeline run result basically in like a provenance information object to uh, EMA, for example. It's not clear how this is going to develop at the moment. My thought would be there may be some added, other standard that does this. There was also some points people raised that RO crates might actually be the future in the European Union, at least. However, also that that's completely speculative, I think, at the moment. It's not really anybody knows exactly what's going to be there in a, in a few months or even years' time. Okay, However, so if the support comes with the NFPROF plugin in the end, I think it will not harm at all. And technically, it means like if there's any other standard accepted at some point, then we can maybe also piggyback on the NFPROF plugin and add that as well. I don't know. I think at the moment, it's just something that is in development and in a, in a movement. So it's not really, really clear, at least to me and to people. I spoke to Rob, Rob Sherman yeah. as well. And he yeah, was also I mean, not sure about it. 
the main thing about this is that uh, the plugin collects all the information, all the metadata, yes. and then puts it in a specific type of uh, JSON report, which differs yes. depending on what kind of uh, schema you adhere to. So as soon as there is a schema that we want to adhere to, we can, I think, build another like ren rendering class, which is basically what, what the plugin then and then does. So that's kind yeah. of nice. Okay. Yeah, but ties in, I think, and it's 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 of interest, I think. But um, at the moment, it's not clear where this moves. Maxime also has some comment. Yeah, I got my question back when we were after oh, that I lost it. Uh, I was thinking, I, I know that it's it's like, I only talk about Sarek because that's my favorite pipeline. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, and yes, uh, we've been thinking a lot about uh, splitting the pipeline up and like uh, writing Sarek again as a meta pipeline. And I do think having like a smaller individual block will make it like easier to be validated and like, uh, Will simplify like the work also uh, at every level and lower the maintenance burden for the developer. And I'm guessing that would might be an interest also as well in this group. So should we help uh, people within NFCore to split their pipeline? How is there anything we can help with that? Oh, we don't have to reply that, but I just want to say, okay, there's something that I'm Put it out there. in. I want to work on it, and yeah. So. Yeah, I think so. Uh, sorry. It makes sense, but yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense, but yes, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's a bit like a, out of scope for now, but yeah. Good. Okay. So maybe I can comment from our end. So we will try to get started at least on the RNA C pipeline, do some of these proof of concept trials that we figure out where are gaps, where are potential things that we would like to cover. I will also hopefully find a little bit of time at least to to work on on this overview and also on this checklist. And if others would like to chime in there, then I'm more than happy to review any contribution and also help out where I can. Uh, I think that's something that I can already kind of, um, yeah, help people with if possible, if my time permits at least. And uh, yeah, then let's move that forward in terms of a bit of a pragmatic approach that we just try to get better with the documentation on on the NF Core page, and then also maybe contribute back to the to the general guidelines that are currently not there, to some extent. I think at least. So some of the points that you raised now today, Arthur, for example, with the atomic uh, PRs and things like that, that's something we should play back. I mean, there are a couple of issues already opened with the NF core pipelines, uh, for example, like this versioning of the web page, other points and aspects that are currently missing. I think if we tackle all of these things and keep them moving, then at some point we will make it easier for everybody. It's not something that we can do probably in a one week sprint, but uh, hopefully something that will at least gradually get better. And if we generate some awareness for these topics and for these aspects, then people will probably also be happy to help out with, with things. Yeah, I don't really have anything else today. So if, if people don't feel like we need to discuss anything else today or want to bring up something, then please also hop on the Slack channel from time to time if you have something that you would like to also share you also have some ideas on who we could, for example, also invite for giving a, a small talk about something in relation to regulatory topics, then please also um, let us know that we can potentially also invite people to give a virtual talk, at least so, uh, as we did with Jonathan from the Biocompute Object Project team. Um, but yeah, otherwise we will meet next time, I think is planned for... I think we have one more this year in um, in the in December. I'm not fully sure about the current. Um, so second to twelve, if we push back, I think there's one more planned meeting on the December December seventeenth actually. So if nothing else comes up, then I would maybe also give people an overview on what we have already started working on. Maybe also others who have something to share on what they did on pipeline validation level already, at least the parts that they can talk about, may be able to actually share that 
uh, maybe that's something we can actually tackle for next next meeting if this uh, is possible time wise for people as well. Okay. Okay, if nothing else pops up now at the moment, then I would close for today because I also have another call. And if people really want to contribute and also bring in their own perspective, please really feel feel free to actually come up with a PR, comment on certain points on the web page that we currently have. You can do that by just like uh, opening um, opening the document and then just clicking here on edit, and then you will get to GitHub and you can actually work on this uh, directly if you want to or directly on GitHub itself. It's a bit difficult to find it there, but that way you can actually find it very quickly. Okay. Thanks everybody for stopping by and also contributing today. And I'll see you latest on the 17th of December, if possible. If not, we'll keep on recording these meetings, but um, I'm also potentially not always there so we'll then leave and delegate probably to others in the, in the regulatory team to um, lead the meeting. Thank you very much for joining and um, have a great week. Thanks.